Hey guys, you've seen me catch a lot of big, beautiful trout like this on video. Why don't you join me on the water? Book a trip with the Kel Kellogg School of Fish and Guide Service, and I will put you on the fish, and I'll teach you how to catch them yourself. We're going to be guiding at Collins Lake this fall aboard the beautiful FHS patio boat. Go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and book your trip now, and we'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. I'll see you there, guys. Fish on, daddy. Oh, yeah. Lake Elmanor, baby. Fish on. Now, that is an orange trolling fly right there. And he's just swimming along with me. We got a little more serious there. Oh, nice fish. Oh, yeah, got it. Woo! Nice fish. Woo! Big rainbow. What a beauty. Man, I couldn't see the net him in that sun. That was a challenge. I, I made my first shot at him and I, I couldn't see him at all. What a beautiful fish. He jumped all over that orange fly. There he is. Crushed him on that orange fly. What a beautiful fish. He's got a few copepods on him. Um, don't often see that at Elmanor, but he'll clean up nice. He is going in the smoker. That's a nice fish. Nice way to start the day. Uh, think lead core line's obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby. Can copepods kill you? The answer to that question is absolutely yes. If you've ever handled a trout that has copepods on the outside, chances are those copepods, the larvae of the copepods, has gone through your skin, entered your nervous system, traveled up your spine, and now you have copepods in your brain, and when they decide the time's right, you're a goner. You're not going to be fishing anymore. It's as, it's as simple as that. It's a ticking time bomb. Of course I'm kidding. People can't get copepods. They are a parasite that affects mainly trout, um, sometimes salmon, um, kokanee can get them, stuff like that. But by and large, they look gross, they're pretty disgusting, but they don't do any real damage. But because they do look gross and they are disgusting, I get a lot of questions about copepods, so I thought I'd throw out what I know about them. Um, one thing, a couple weeks ago, I caught a trout up at Lake Elmanor, the first one I've ever caught at Elmanor that had copepods on it. Fish was kind of deeply hooked on a fly, and it was bleeding, so I kept it. I scraped the copepods off, and the meat was just fine. Copepods are like beauty. They're only skin deep. They don't affect the meat. You can eat a fish that has copepods on it. It'll be just fine. The meat's just fine. Um, it's cyclic. Um, some lakes that, you know, had the reputation for years of being real bad, like Berryessa, they hardly have any anymore. And then there's lakes like Elmanor. I've got hundreds of trout at Elmanor. I never caught one with copepods, but the first fish this spring, guess what's got copepods on it? So cold water can kind of suppress copepod activity, drives their numbers down, but rest assured, they are present at every lake in California, and uh, they are present in most of our hatcheries. Now, in a lake, the fish usually get them, they shed them, they, they, their skin clears up, it's kind of like a kid with acne, and they just go right about their business and they're fine. In a hatchery, it can be a little more serious because it's a closed environment and they can actually get enough copepods in their gills that it affects their ability to transfer oxygen from the water to their bloodstream, and when that happens and you're a rainbow trout, you die, so that's bad. Um, Back in the day, the only treatment for a hatchery with copepods was to remove all the fish, clean the raceways with bleach, and then let them remain dry for 60 to 90 days and start all over again. But uh, somewhere through the course of time, some, some biologist or some hatchery tried something, it was probably discovered by accident, but what they found was that while copepods can 
attached to eastern brook trout because eastern brook trout aren't native to the west coast the copepods can't effectively reproduce on brook trout copepods they have a short lifespan they have to attach and reproduce before they die so what they found out is kind of picture this picture a hatchery that has four raceways the water comes in from a river through raceway one into two into three into four back into the river again what they found was if they put eastern brook trout in the first raceway and the third raceway and rainbows in the second and fourth raceway this is what happens the first tank with the brook trout they get a lot of copepod attachment but the copepods they can't reproduce on the brook trout so they just die without you know bringing along the second generation of copepods now the rainbows in the second tank they have a few and the the brook trout in the third tank they have even fewer but those few that they have they can't reproduce so that fourth tank is pretty much clear of copepods and so is the water going back into the river so just just by the fact that that eastern brook trout are not native to the west coast the west coast copepods can't utilize them as a host that they can reproduce on and they found that it's a it's a pretty simple way to drive copepod numbers down in a hatchery without you know going offline without draining the whole system cleaning the raceways and all that so that's kind of an interesting aside that's about all i know about copepods they go in cycles the cycles kind of go from lake to lake but if you catch a trout with copepods you know keep the trout don't keep the trout they're not going to hurt you they come off real easy in fact if you've got a trout that you're going to release that has copepods on it you might just take a towel and give him a quick wipe and toss him back in it'll take off some of his slime that may kill the trout but you get some of the copepods off so it's kind of a you know got to kind of decide for yourself kind of situation that trout i caught at elmanor he was flopping around in the net and i had copepods all over the front of the kayak so i have that rubber net so they come off pretty easily when a fish is live when they're flopping around like that so anyway keep them let them go don't worry about them they're not going to hurt you you're not going to get copepods in your brain and they're probably not going to kill that trout it's a cyclic thing they're going to come they're going to go it's part of the system. It's part of being a trout. You're going to get a copepod. It's like if you and I went out and walked in the woods here, we're probably going to get a tick. Probably not going to kill us. It's going to be gross, though. It's going to be disgusting. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got to say about copepods. Um, hope that informed you a little bit. And if you want to know more, you know, research it on Google. There's all kinds of information out there. There's all kinds of scientific studies from hatcheries and stuff that get all deeply into it. But just know they can't hurt you. They just look yucky. So anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll, uh, you'll know every time I'm on here talking about parasites of one kind or another or whatever I'm talking about. And if you're looking for high quality trout gear, including my patented copepod repellent, kidding again i don't have that go on over to the fish hunt shoot productions website and check out our store you'll see all kinds of quality trout gear there that will catch trout both with and without copepods and uh that's all i got to say i will catch you next time right here on youtube guys you have a great day and uh, i'm gonna go do some